I um, share my screen here. Got a little presentation for you guys. All righty, can you all see that? I can't see your faces anymore. Yeah, <laughs> can that's, you guys that's perfect. You're getting okay. a lot of nodding. Okay, awesome. Right on. Um, so I just want to start by thanking the organizing committee, all the schools who are participating uh, for putting this event on. Um, CARM is hard to host at the best of times, and I would say we're in the worst of times. So good for you guys for still having a presence and still showing up and still providing people um, something else to focus on. So yeah, good job guys, for sure. Even if it's it seems like you know low participation or whatever, it's, uh, it's still worth it. And uh, so good job. And uh, so my presentation here is just on um, my experiences and, and the opportunities that IFSA can provide. So I went to UNBC in, uh, in Northern British Columbia there. And um, I held several positions throughout my years at, at IFSA. I was a member from 2015 to 2019. And um, so putting this presentation together, I just, I felt so nostalgic and I was going through all my photos and just really made my heart super full and warm. So um, this was just a really fun thing for, for me to do. And so I hope to share with you guys some of my favorite moments from the past like five years of my life. Um, so of course, big shout out University Laval, um, 2016. CARM. This was the first event that I ever went to. Um, I'd never been to Quebec before. Um, it was a it was a really big moment for me. Uh, it was the first IFSA event I ever attended, so I was really getting immersed in sort of the structure of IFSA. I had so many questions. I didn't really know what was going on, but I just sort of showed up, and I'm sure you guys can recognize a a few friendly faces in that photo on the left there, and um, yeah, we did lots of cool things, snowshoeing and research forests and um, the sugar shack, my first uh, experience with the maple syrup sugar shack. Um, so there's my happy face on the left. And um, yeah, on the right is our delegation that we sent from UNBC. And uh, that photo is from we went to uh, a cup block where there was some active logging and I was just one year into forestry. I hadn't even seen active logging before. So here I was like little BC kid, just like, wow. Um, all the feller bunches and stuff. So it was really, it was a really great trip and met a lot of really amazing people that I still keep in touch with today. And so the next, the next one I went to was CARM in 2017 and that was hosted by the University of Washington. And uh, this was also a really great trip. I mean, I think you guys are gonna hear me say that at every slide, what a great trip. <laughs> um, the photo on the left is from the, the magical Ho forest where there's just so much moss hanging off all the trees. It's a really magical place. And uh, we did lots of exploring. We, we toured the, the Trail of Giants uh, we went to nurseries and greenhouses, and it was really interesting to see how um, how they do forestry down uh, in the Pacific Northwest in the states. And uh, yeah, we got to explore Olympic National Park and um, the Pack Forest as well, the Pack Research Forest. So this is a photo of everyone who attended that CARM in the Olympic National Forest. And this is us walking through one of the cut blocks at the research forest. And this is particularly interesting to me. I was going through these photos and like, oh my gosh, I remember this. Um, the photo on the left is of a cut block that's being fertilized, treated with human feces. And the photo on the right is all the happy little seedlings growing in that fertilizer treatment. 
So this sort of just goes to show, you know, traveling around different places really exposes you to different practices. Like I had never uh, even heard or considered that you would apply uh, human feces to the forest for fertilization in a forestry context. So um, I don't know about you guys, but that was new to me. <laughs> And uh, the organizing community always makes sure there's there's time for fun as well. So we got to explore some of the, the beautiful coastline, uh, the beautiful beaches, uh, which was really great. And again, you know, having people come from all over Canada and America, um, not everybody gets to spend a lot of time with the ocean. So it was really cool for us to get to explore that. So later in 2017, I attended the IFSS, the International Forestry Student Symposium, and this was held in South Africa. So this was a big deal. This was, I'd never been to an IFSS before. Again, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit more familiar with IFSA, but at the time, um, you know, you're, you're sort of in your little bubble in the, this Northern America bubble. And then you go to IFSS and it's like, whoa, okay, this is, this is so much more. There's you know, there's voting, there's all sorts of different things happening. So um, South Africa was was really amazing. And the photo on the right is everyone who participated. And uh, the photo on the left, there are all the guys from Estonia at the Research Forest. Um, and this is a map of uh, where everyone came from. So as you can see, super diverse, you know, a few folks from Canada and America, Mexico, um, South America, big cohort from Europe, because of course, um, IFSA is, is a bit Eurocentric, it was founded in, in Europe, so um, lots of people participating from there, uh, a few folks from various countries in Africa and Asia, Indonesia, and some representatives from Australia too, so it was a really great diverse group of people, and uh, it just really facilitates that knowledge exchange and sharing. Um, which is exactly what we did. So that photo on the left, um, this is really just, you know, the opportunity for brainstorming, exchanging information and ideas and experiences. You know, you sit around with the table, there's someone from Indonesia and there's someone from the Congo and there's someone from Quebec and BC and Michigan. And you're all talking about the same thing, but it's so different for all of you. And sometimes it's all the same too. So. Um, you never know sort of what you're going to talk about or learn from each other. Uh, so it was really fun. And then the photo on the right is of Table Mountain, uh, which we hiked up and it, it's overlooking uh, beautiful Cape Town uh, on the coast of South Africa. Some familiar faces again. <laughs> Here's some happy folks from our Northern America uh, group. And uh, we had a pretty, a pretty cheesy saying that developed on this trip. Um, there are good ships and wood ships, but the best ships are friendships. <laughs> and this sort of blurry photo, my apologies, is of um, the hog's back, they call it in South Africa. Uh, those mountains in the background kind of resemble um, the back of one of the wild boars or hogs that they have roaming around in South Africa. So they kind of call this area the hog's back. And you can see um, the big plantation throughout there. All those green trees are all planted pinus species. And so we learned about their forestry practices, um, all the different species they plant. Wildfire management was a really big topic there. And um, wildlife management as well in, the, in Kruger Park. And this was really interesting to me. Um, this is a photo of how they plant trees in South Africa. So that big orange metal arm, um, that, that kind of is on a big machine and it goes across and it injects fertilizer and this stuff called hydrogel into the earth. And then those gentlemen come along behind and plant the trees in the hole that the machine makes. And so the tree already has the fertilizer and um, it's basically like a chemical that creates water, essentially, if I remember correctly, um, to try and, and save the trees from drought. So it's, uh, 
yeah, totally different from BC. I mean, the land is flat and um, there's no brush competition and, and really their biggest concern is drought. So it was uh, really interesting to learn about tree planting in South Africa. And here's a little photo of a cross section of a pine. We visited a mill when we were there. And uh, again, so different from BC, we were shocked to hear that uh, the full rotation for pine is like 15 to 20 years. So add another like 60, 80 years on and that's what we're looking at in Canada. <laughs> so yeah, completely different. Um, and yeah, overall, just a really amazing experience. Um, this is a photo of a group of the women that were there in that conference. And this photo was to celebrate uh, International Women's Day. And um, yeah, like I mentioned, I still chat with uh, a few of these ladies and stay in touch. And um, it's just really inspiring and, and such a good group of people. And uh, yeah, you just never know sort of where these, where these friendships will lead. And so later that year, 2017 was a big year for me. Um, later that year, uh, I attended this conference and I, I should back up and say that at IFSS, um, I was voted in for the head of the United Nations Convention of Biological Diversity. So the head of that subcommission. And I'm gonna talk more about that later, but um, basically this was the first conference I attended um, and it was my first taste of the United Nations and uh, sort of just the, the first endeavor with that title of the head of that subcommission. Um, so this is, uh, it was, this conference was pretty interesting. It's, it's a bit hard to explain without the context of the UNCBD, but basically one of the provisions of the UNCBD is this ad hoc open-ended working group and Article 8J is about the traditional knowledge of Indigenous peoples and their local communities. So most of what the UNCBD focuses on is, is biodiversity and conservation and science and research, but there's also this really big social aspect. So what about the people who live on that land? Um, you know, a lot of the time, you know, Western scientists come in and they do the research and they, they take their results back to the Western scientific world. And so this is sort of getting at, um, okay, but what about the rights of those people? What's happening to that knowledge? Is it being exploited? Who's benefiting? All those really complicated sort of social questions. So this was a really interesting conference just because it is um, got more of a social focus than just straight up forestry. Catherine and I, so fun. Um, so because, uh, because I went to CARM in, in 2016, this conference was held in Montreal. And so I had a couple friends, so I had a place to stay. And that's something that I think is really beautiful about IFSA. You know, you never know who's going to call you up and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm stopping by your city. Can I crash on your couch? Um, so yeah, you just never know. And so there's also some smaller, more informal conferences that happen or meetings um, that happen throughout, throughout all the regions of IFSA. So for example, this photo is from um, a meeting called the, the, the West Coast Meetup. And this was in 2018 hosted by UBC Vancouver. And one of the main organizers for this event uh, is from Germany. So he was doing his master's at UBC and, and put on this event. He had an internship um, on Gabriola Island. So that's off the, off the coast of Vancouver Island where I'm from. So living in Prince George now is really great for me to get to come down uh, to the islands and, and spend some time sort of in my home area. And it was really neat because some folks that we brought along with us, um, such as Eric in this photo, he's from uh, you know, small town northern BC and had never really spent a lot of time around uh, coastal ecosystems. So here's our little crew from northern BC. Again, I ended up living with Steph here. <laughs> uh, me and Kayla are still friends. Yeah, so it's just, 
it's really great. Um, when you get to experience things with people, it really forms a strong friendship. And something else I really appreciate is uh, we get to learn from each other. So this is Stephanie right here, and she's also from Victoria, like me. So we had quite a bit to share about the coastal ecosystems, um, you know, plant ID, uh, tidal zones, things like that. So it was really fun to to just share with people who um, who have something else to offer about where they're from. So that knowledge exchange is just so so great and so important. And uh, the photo on the left is of us helping out a restoration project on Gabriel Island. So um, the lower mainland and Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands as they're called, um, struggle a bit with invasive species. And so this was a restoration project and we were planting um, in their community sort of garden and um, yeah, just gearing up for spring and the growing season. So that was really fun. And then, um, some rest and relaxation staring at the ocean, photo on the right, always important. And so here's our group from that West Coast meetup. And uh, yeah, this was mostly, <clears throat> I think, UBC, UNBC, um, Washington, and I think Michigan, I think, uh, we had some Michigan representatives as well, if I recall. And then later that year, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 2018, um, this was the biggest conference for me that I ever attended in IFSA. This, um, this was the UN Convention of Biological Diversity. Excuse me. Tickle in my throat now. Ah, one moment. <coughs> ah, water in my eyes. Okay. So the United Nations. Um, so this convention has three main objectives. The Convention of um, Biological Diversity, the sustainable use of that diversity and then <clears throat> sort of as I was explaining before sort of that equitable sharing of, uh, of those resources so the people and the social component and I pulled this slide from the if so website because I just wanted to show sort of how um, how the UNCBD fits in with the rest of IFSA so it might be a little bit difficult for you guys to see on the slide here but Basically, the UN CBD is down here in the orange, so part of this international policy section. <coughs> and when I was looking at this, I was uh, I was so pleased to see the the green section, the internal, has expanded so much since I was a part of IFSA. Um, there's language and carbon and podcasts, um, publications, so many awesome opportunities and uh, ways to get involved. So it doesn't have to be on this like really big scale, um, you know, large conferences all over the world. It can be, you know, participating in a podcast or um, sharing information and research. So that was really cool to see. So here we are in 2018 at the Conference of Biodiversity. Excuse me. And uh, as I said, this conference was huge. There was um, there was over six thousand people, I think, that attended from all over the world. And it was held in Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt. And here's our here's our little delegation. Um, something that can be challenging for IFSA is getting funding for people. Um, so. Uh, our delegation was quite small heading to this conference just because funding was kind of tough for a lot of people to, uh, to allocate. But we had representatives from Indonesia, Canada, Africa, and Germany. So we learned, we learned a lot um, at the conference, but we also learned a lot from each other because we would 
we sort of go our separate ways sometimes throughout the conference in the day, and then we would always meet back up and sort of debrief and, and share what we learned with each other. Um, we all had some different interests, interests which made it uh, which made it kind of exciting. So yeah, we learned lots at the at the conference, but there was also time to explore as well. So we did a trip um, over to the the Great Pyramids in Cairo, Egypt. So that was pretty amazing. Definitely on my bucket list. And here's a caterpillar munching on an acacia tree, <coughs> excuse me, with some big thorns to uh, help protect it from camels who eat the foliage for water. And I was totally blown away by the resilience of these plants. Like if you look at the photo on the, uh, on the right, little clump of, um, of palm trees just growing there, like right out of the rocks, just collecting all the water that sort of comes down and really blown away by that resiliency. Okay, some more familiar phases. <coughs> Pardon me, the air in this office is so dry. Oh, um, so CARM 2019, this was my final IFSA event. Um, so really special in my heart for lots of reasons. The, the photo on the right there is, um, we did a tour with uh, a forest researcher, Suzanne Samard, who teaches at the University of Northern BC, or sorry, University of BC. And uh, she's, a, she's one of my idols. She's a, a really, really incredible woman doing some really interesting research on um, how trees interact and talk to each other underground and uh, exchange nutrients uh, with mycelium and things. So if you haven't seen her TED talk, I would highly recommend it. It's really good. And um, the photo on the left there is the Tree Seed Center. And that was a really cool tour as well. We got to learn a lot about um, just forestry practices in BC, sort of where we get the seeds from um, and uh, how they're grown, the different species and timelines and things like that. So that was a really, uh, a really informative tour. Uh, I still have the poster, it's hanging on my wall. <laughs> and uh, we also did a tour of the, um, the UBC uh, Botanical Gardens. And this was beautiful. There was there was so many trees from you know all across Canada and some ornamental trees. And uh, I saw this sign about resilience and I took a photo of it. <clears throat> As you never you never know when you're gonna need uh, a photo of a sign about resilience, but here we are. And um, so it's it's describing resilience in an ecosystem. Um, <clears throat> maintain or regain its species composition and richness once it's disturbed. But I really do believe that, uh, that this is applicable to people too. Um, you know, we're able to maintain and regrow and rebound after a disturbance. And I think the key to that is that biodiversity, right? And so I believe groups like IFSA really provide that biodiversity or that diversity to our lives. Um, we become way more resilient through our friendships and our experiences and our opportunities. And um, so, yeah, I really, I really do believe that groups like IFSA can, can make us more resilient. And here's a quote I came across the other day. Um, Women in Wood is another really great group um, that I follow. If, if you don't know of them, check them out. They're, uh, I think they're all over. Canada and the, and the United States, I think. But anyways, the quote here is, you truly do miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So true. <clears throat> you never know unless you try. And it's sort of the same with, with IFSA. You know, like way back in 2015, 2016, I had no idea what I had signed up for. I didn't really know what I was getting into or where it was gonna lead or who I was gonna meet or see or do. But uh, yeah, I'm so glad that I did. Um, and you never know unless you unless you give it a shot. So this is my last slide, and I just like to close by you know saying 
my best advice is to take the opportunities that that are available to you that become available and uh, present themselves to you. You never know where they'll lead or where you'll end up or who you'll meet. Um, and if you don't see the opportunity that you think that you want or need, um, IFSA is a really great place to create that for yourself. Um, there's a lot of flexibility and there's a lot of, um, a lot of options and a lot of chapters all over the world like you could do you know, a master's program somewhere else or an internship or a co-op or something. Um, it can really take you anywhere. And I know it's sort of hard to imagine right now during a global pandemic, but um, when things get better, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do uh, a lot of what I've shared with you today. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for your time and attention. And again, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, really made my, my heart full and uh, I hope I hope brought back some memories for some other folks too. Thanks. Thank you, Liz, that was awesome. Um, yeah, it sure did. Those pictures of Carm really, uh, really brought up some memories. It's, it, it was cool of you to share. And uh, yeah, sorry about the phone ringing in the background, but- um, No uh, worries about coughing there so much. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. I, I just <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, I just hope it's nothing too bad, right? But um, anyway, uh, yeah, I think your your experience with NFSA is a great one because it's uh, it really shows you took you know advantage of each opportunity that was given to you, and uh, that's of course something that I personally can learn from. Um, did anyone have any questions for this? Um, then in that case, I might have one. Uh, you brought it up very briefly, but what would be uh, your main advice for someone who's um, who's trying to attend uh, conferences like the CBD? Uh, that of course sometimes it's hard for to gather people, but sometimes there's also quite a competition uh, between members to attend those events. So yeah, what would be your main advice? Yeah, for sure. That's a great. Great question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the funding aspect is is really tricky. Um, I think in uh, in North America to to generalize, I think there are a lot of funding opportunities, but in other countries um, and in other places, other continents like Africa, it was really hard to get a lot of those folks funding. So for me, leading a delegation and having, I think I had like you know, almost 30 applicants, but then because of funding, um, I could only take three. So it's kind of hard when you're the one <clears throat> organizing these events. And, you know, there is a certain amount of, of responsibility on the delegates themselves to find this funding. Um, and that can be through their universities or um, grants, the government, um, you know, there's there's different avenues, but it is really hard, especially in, in other countries. So that was really the, the main hurdle. And because IFSA is nonprofit, they do have uh, what's called the development fund, or or they did, and they might still have it. But again, the competition for that money is is really high, and um, it's it's pretty much for like one person for one conference a year kind of thing. Like they, we really, you know, it's all volunteer, it's all student, it's it's nonprofit. We really don't have um, sort of the the mechanisms to get funding for everybody who wants to attend conferences. So that's just something that you really gotta come outright and, and make really clear is like, you have to find your own money if you wanna come, uh, which is really tough for some folks. So um, we just try and share whatever we we learn and, and get from these conferences, because that's the whole point, right? It's not to just go and experience this for yourself, but it's also to bring it back and to share with your IFSA family about what you learned if they couldn't attend. So yeah, well, I think you, of course, did a great job of doing just that um, today. You know, sharing a Saturday, uh, Saturday morning with us. It's uh, it's very generous of you. Yeah, it brings me back to the coffee hours. I miss absolutely. them. Absolutely, yeah, we will. Yeah, and Tom, it's so great to see you. Bye. <laughs>
Hi, Liz. Hi. <laughs> I liked your uh, the. I had a question about the um, the the feci block. Um, what, what kind of uh, trees were they planting? Conifers. It was it was just like your a classic. Um, I think it was like Doug fir and spruce, um, just like mixed forest, and it, oh. the the feces was like treated. I don't know how. But it was treated and then applied to the block as like a as a fertilizer. So that was in um, that was in the pack research forest. So they were just sort of they had their own little cut blocks that they were um, try doing the trials for that on. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Um, have, I think <laughs> I've seen that done in like personal gardens and stuff before with uh, human feces, but that's pretty big, large scale. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's very interesting because it might be a, an interesting pathways for uh, you know countries that are having issues with uh, getting rid of of those species. I mean, I'm guessing in Washington it's not that big of a problem, but um, yeah, of course, in in some other countries it might be. Yeah, and you know, I, on that topic, you'd be surprised. Like Victoria, you know where I'm from, beautiful Victoria. Like we pumped raw sewage right into the ocean for hundreds of years literally hundreds of years so just because you know we we have money and infrastructure and stuff doesn't mean we're going to be doing the right thing with our waste <laughs> so i think there are a lot of learnings from from that for sure as, as how to better utilize our waste if we can yeah absolutely it's very very interesting is it something that uh, that it used uh, on large scale, uh, the use of uh, human feces, or it was just like a little a little experience? And yeah, I think it was on the smaller scale in the in the um, pack research forest in in Washington. I think it was you know just within their research forests. Um, but I don't know now. I mean, I mean, maybe it's expanded. Who knows? It, it looked successful. Like in that photo, the seedlings were like really happy. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thanks again, Liz. If, uh, if there aren't any more questions, um, Maybe we can go ahead with uh, Vincent's presentation, which is uh, probably going to touch on a few topics uh, Liz covered on IFSS. And uh, I'll let Vincent do the introduction, but um, I I'm sure you guys are going to be uh, are going to be happy to see the progress that has been made in the organization of this year's IFSS. Yeah. Um... We have a new guest. Uh, maybe uh, you can present yourself. Uh, I don't know how to say your name. Yoni, Joni. Yeah, hi guys. Sorry, I joined in a little late. I'm the current IFSA chair at the UMBC Local Committee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys as well. And uh, Tommy Younger is going to be taking over my duties after I graduate uh, at the end of April. All right, so um, yeah, so I'm gonna share my screen too. So yeah, everybody see uh, my screen? Yep, that's perfect. Yeah, so uh, yeah, my name is Vincent. And I'm the president of uh, IFSS 2021 OC. I was the president of IFSS 2022. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, yeah, it's been three years uh, since we have been uh, elected to host the IFSS 2020. But yeah, since you know that uh, we are in the global pandemic, uh, we postponed the IFSS 2020 for this summer and thanks again to Costa Rica LC and uh, they've been uh, elected in 2019 to host the IFSS 2020 but we we've asked uh, if they can let 
let us like uh, do the IFSS 2021 since we have been working hard for two years now and now it's three years so and this um, this autumn we took the decision yeah to do the IFSS entirely online it's something it's it was hard to make this decision for the OC because uh, like Liz said um, IFSS it's a big it's one of the biggest events in IFSA and this is where you can you can really know how IFSA is big and how it's serious and how it's a big family so this is the this is like the main event for uh, new people that enter IFSA uh, can really uh, know what IFSA is and and like continue uh, to do some presentation and to to do CARM or, or to be a R to take a position because they like fell in love with IFSA and all the family so but unfortunately uh, this summer we need to do it online because of the pandemic and it's it's hard for an OC just to host the IFSS because you're like 12 and there's two weeks of a two weeks of traveling and it's a big logistic game for the OC and imagine if someone get infected and you're just making a tour of the of the country and yeah I don't want to like to uh, imagine that so that's why we took the decision to do to make it online but uh yeah so this year is going to be on 25 july to august 8th so we have the same team which is the forest for tomorrow society so yeah this is like the this is a draft but uh yeah we will confirm it like uh, within the next week uh like the registrations are going to open uh like maybe on april and great news with the uh, online is the the thing that is great it's entirely free so there's a lot of people of if so can can reach the ifss can share knowledge so this is a great point and the other great points that uh, we did is that we are going to make a little capsule uh, which is five to seven minutes where we want to represent uh, how if IFSS is going on when you're like visiting the country and there's member of the OC that's showing a different aspect of the for of uh, their forestry and different aspect of the culture so they can they taking you on a bus on the field trips and so the capsule trying to represent that like kind of energy and so in five to seven minutes where we are going to uh, create short movie of a different aspect of our first tree and within the capsule there's two members uh, like that taking you uh, to different uh, different trip so uh, by now we've been we've been the we've been doing the, sh the shooting for tree capsule and it's it's really going on we have a professional team and it's really nice uh, about now so so yeah diff we have we have we are going to do the ifss on seven days with the ga but though it's um about two weeks so yeah every day i have like a, as a, a different teams of a different aspect of our, of our forestry. So this is how we are trying to represent at the best IFSS. I know it's not like in real time, but uh, I think with the capsule and we're going to put some Kahoot and fun interactive uh, between like presentation to make it nice and try to represent the spirit of IFSS at the best. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I want to, Maybe make a little introduction before show you showing showing you these pictures. Uh, yeah, every intro of the capsule is going to uh, to begin with a question, uh, several questions of different team 
and the member of the OC will like answer uh, answer at the at the question just to to give you a hint of what do we think of this aspect of our forestry and we did the the shooting for one uh, for one day of this uh, like part of our capsule and I just want to show you guys uh, some member of our OC uh, so we were at the school and we were uh, answering some questions and it was a nice day because we were all of the part of the OC and so we can see Sandrine. Hi Sandrine. <laughs> so we were uh, answering some questions. It was really nice to see like a different uh, answer of, uh, of our OC. This is Ariane, she's there today. Caroline, there you go. Alice. Uh, yeah, Alice, she's been in uh, like four or five years in IFSA. So yeah, first day, uh, the topics, the theme is uh, forest in Quebec. So well, yeah, we begin a uh, welcome speech from uh, the president of IFSA, president of IFSA, uh, maybe uh, yeah, the dean of our faculty. And this is where uh, every day we have a Kahoot. So the, the Kahoot is like, um, like a quiz for those of you who uh, don't know. A quiz and with this is like a, you get to know a lot of information in a short time and it's interactive so it's fun. So every day there's a Kahoot and what we want to do is to make teams but mix team from each LC of IFSA so you, you can get to know uh, other, other people, other person of the different LC. And at the end of the IFSS, uh, we're going like to uh, gather all the points and maybe the, the first, second and third place, uh, they're going to have some gifts. So we're going to send gift uh, at your home. So maybe a can of maple syrup uh, and different kind of gifts. So to make this like fun, you know? So this is why when the, the subscription going to, are going to open, uh, there's a field where you can put your address so we can uh, send you the gift where we, wherever you are uh, on the planet. So after that real presentation of our forestry, um, and uh, we're going to present the capsule with an introduction of the capsule. So, so that's for the first day. Uh, yeah, second day it's uh, conservation in stakes. So again, count on forestry issues in Quebec. Uh, capsule, uh, this one will be uh, about climate change uh, filmed at the Montmorency Forest, which is our research forest, uh, where uh, Liz have been, has been and she presents you a little photo of our forest research so we've been doing a capsule there uh, and after that yeah because the capsule of uh, Montmorency Forest we are showing like um, one research going on uh, which is on forestry hydrology but there's a lot of going on and this is why after that they're going to be like a presentation of three to four uh, researchers and research that's going on in Montmorency Forest, like uh, Evelyn Tifo, like uh, Gab uh, said uh, earlier, and Alexia Shane and other. And then after that, there's a question and answer. And uh, yeah, when I when I put more in the presentation is because we didn't uh, we didn't find what we want to put, but uh, it's it's going to be something really interactive, like. Uh, we had a brainstorm um, just before Christmas with like 30 people, if, if so. And like maybe we can do like a session of yoga or, a, you know, something that's like a ice breaking group and with questions, you know, something that represents IFSS at the best. So more to expect. So this is like, a, this is some trailer of the capsule. So really a professional uh, picture, you know. So we have a, G a red Jeep. Uh, this is like a, we hire a, a red Jeep. We rent a, a red Jeep every time at a capsule. So this is our, uh, yeah, this is the Montmorency Forest, which is a big, 
a territory of where uh, big research going on. So yeah, the third day it's on forestry and transformation and uh, another Kahoot Quebec silviculture. So yeah, the capsule of the, uh, it's really nice. We we did the capsule and it's a winter operation uh, of forestry because it's a, uh, it's part of our uh, our forestry because we are like eight months of winter, not this year because it's kind of fucked up with the climate. But uh, yeah, it's really, it was really nice to uh, to shoot uh, operation and it's very diverse what we have been doing. So uh, partial cuts, we have a, a cut for the deer management. So it's really nice. And after that, we are going in a in a in a factory where the the tree is going to be transformed. So yeah, after that, uh, we have presentation about our silviculture and and more fun and interactive fun. So yeah, uh, on the fourth day, uh, this is the next episode that uh, we are going to shoot uh, in two weeks. So maple syrup, uh, which is a big part of our culture and within the forest. Um, so yeah, this is a cow sugar shack. We have a capsule and uh, yeah, Putin day uh, because it's uh, the international night. For those of you that don't know what is international night, it, this is a night where we have like every LC of every country presenting their typical food, typical uh, drinks and cultural, uh, all of their cultural uh, aspect of the country. And it's, this is really a nice night. Um, so to make this nice and uh, interactive, uh, we are going to like uh, send the recipe of a pudding for every attendee of the IFSS and they're going to present their poutine and we're going to share uh, the taste of poutine together and uh, talk about that <laughs> because it, it, this is our meal like a traditional meal maybe maybe not traditional but uh, that represents uh, a lot of our culture yeah on the fifth day we have first nations and social forestry because uh, there's a uh, there's nation there's first nations on this territory that were here before we arrived uh, 400 years ago about and we want to put this aspect in because that's that means a lot to to us and to first nations do and we're going to see like a cree yeah a cree nation um and we are going to have like a the capsule is more on the cultural, the culture of First Nations. So we're going to learn a lot to uh, on this on this field trips. So looking forward to to do it, and we want to do a, a workshop too on uh, social uh, forestry around the world. I think uh, right now in Quebec we have a lot of a like a yeah a beginning uh, of a crisis with uh, our forestry. So. I think it's right on time that if we do a workshop about that, it's really important to to have the acceptance of of social because yeah. On the sixth day, uh, yeah, sixth day it's uh, research topics. Uh, so we're going to present our campus, our faculty, and what's going on in terms of research uh, at our faculty. Uh, so yeah, this day is really nice because we had the we had the idea to make like a present the your thesis in one hundred and eighty uh, say one hundred and eighty seconds. So it's really nice. And um, maybe during the subscription or after that, uh, we're going to make an open call, and every member of if so. Uh, can uh, like uh, send their their thesis or their uh, their dissertation, and we're going to pick some of those like medical contest. And during this this day, uh, you can show uh, your research at all if some members. I think it's really nice to 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 hear and what people are doing in terms of research. 
And after that, we have a virtual networking at ULAVAL researchers. And there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of research going on in University Laval and different university in Canada. So we want to do a virtual networking. If anybody of uh, any uh, country wants to, to do their thesis or do their master in Canada, so it's a, it's a big uh, opportunity to, to see what's going on and maybe to plug you and come to Canada or Quebec to see us. And on the last day, it's innovation. So we have a Kahoot about added values and innovation. And we have a capsule about a commercial wood construction, which is a big thing in Quebec that's going on. And we want to present this aspect as well. And maybe more, yeah, to be confirmed right now, we're trying to, ha to have a, a FP Innovations, which is a company that's doing a lot of innovation in the, our forestry field. And yeah, conference and after that closing ceremony. So yeah, that's it, that's it for the the IFSS. I think it's yeah, I think it's going to be a even if it's online, I think it's going to be a nice event. And and with the capsule, I think it's really innovative to do that because after that we want to create like a to gather and to make a synthesis of all the capsule, and it's going to be like permanent, and everybody uh, can see it. And and after that, in two, two, 2022, it's uh, Chile IFSS, and I hope this is going to be a real IFSS because it's uh, so important for the for our like the continuity of uh, if so so that's it if you have question i'm all yours I, I don't really have a question, but it's uh, maybe more of a comment. Um, you, you mentioned it, but of course, I, I think the OC did a great job of setting up an agenda that isn't only uh, conferences and presentations like we're so used to. I mean, um, classes haven't stopped for any of us, and most of the time it's uh, a teacher speaking in front of its slideshow, um, but the fact that uh, you're bringing a team, you know, in the forest and a professional team as well with cameras and great sound and everything. I think it's, it adds a lot of value to the event. And of course, it's, uh, it never comes close to a real life event. Uh, but it, it sure is going to be uh, very, very interesting. And I'm certainly looking forward to it. Yeah, of course. And yeah, since there are half of the attendee today, our member of the OC, <laughs> but I'm thanking you all the OC for all the hard work that we've been doing. And yeah, with the capsule, when we put the capsule on, uh, it was like, a, it's really nice to have this, but it's a lot of hard work to do. And because if we, if we chose to, if we had choose to do the, like the, the live IFSS like we used to, uh, maybe it would it would have been less hard work because uh, capsule is like just last week or two weeks ago it was like three uh, three days of shooting and but this is going to be a really uh, a nice thing yeah yeah you're right and of course you know covid is not only the the thing that has forced us to do this but it also complicates things for filming because if we were to film you know the same thing in a normal context it would be easy but um we're planning on you know uh, filming in a sugar shack next week and uh last week it would have been great because restrictions were down and uh you know we we basically could have uh, had lunch in the sugar shack um but just a few days later it's uh, you know everything is shut down and it's um uh, i mean i, I got a tip my hat off to Vincent because it's uh, it's been since the last year just lots of ups and downs and um, a lot of 
unpredictability. So there you go. Yeah, especially with our government, but uh, this is all political. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Vanessa. Um, I'm guessing you're staying available uh, if anybody has any more questions. Um, but it's a nice little segue to, uh, to a presentation I wanted to give. Um, something really, really quick, but just uh, for the people who might be listening that are less familiar with IFSA structure um, or people that might be watching the recording that are you know, curious to see how IFSA is organized. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, you can tell me if that works. Nice little look at my Facebook page, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, we, we see all your private conversation. <laughs> awesome. I'll just cut that out in the editing room. Um, oh, but there it is. Uh, Liz also uh, showed you the if so wheel in her uh, previous presentation. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take a closer look at it. Um, because when we really have our head down in our local committees, it's sometimes hard to, um, to let's say, understand what goes on uh, behind it or on a more global scale. So there it is um, if you want to consult it on your own, it's uh, it's really worth the visit. It's only on ifsa.net slash structure. And uh, it really tells a lot about, um, about uh, IFSA as a whole. As you all know, uh, since you're all part of OCs, uh, LCs, I mean, so local committees, um, you're part of IFSA. But all those local committees have people that are working on uh, keeping IFSA coherent and keeping its activities going uh, on three different spheres. Uh, so the first one being the external sphere. Uh, Liz touched a lot on that subject with all the subcommissions that are related to our uh, numerous partners. Um, so we have one IFSA member for each subcommission. So basically all the little, um, yeah, the little squares I'm touching here are all associated with one member that is, uh, that takes care of the subcommission. On top of that, uh, we have another member that is um, head of commission or uh, and I mean partners head of commission or international policy head of commission. Uh, so basically all what we call uh, IFSA official positions. And then on top of that external counselor which make up for the whole external sphere of things. Um, on the internal level, once again, um, Liz touched a bit on that, but it's everything related to activities within IFSA. Uh, so when you become an IFSA member, you can um, for example, have a, an access to podcasts, um, publications, everything like that, really communication between LCs that are overall um, being taken care of by the internal, uh, internal counselor, we could say that overlooks all of this. And um, then something that's really interesting and the CARM in which we're taking part today basically is part of all of the membership council. Uh, so this is basically the sphere that takes care of, um, let's say it's basically the glue that keeps all the LCs together within its own region. So as you all know, we're part of the uh, Canadian American region, uh, the Northern American region, which is um, right over there. Uh, which is looked upon by a regional representative. Um, so in my case, that would be me. Um, and then my role is just to uh, make sure all the LCs are staying connected and that the communication between all the other spheres are being made and reach all the Northern American LCs. 
And of course, once again, it's uh, being overlooked by a membership counselor. Uh, let's just make sure everything runs smoothly between all these regional representatives. And on top of that, finally, we have uh, what we call the uh, like the little F IFSA circle. Uh, if you ever hear about IFSA 7, those are the seven officials that are all in this little circle. Um, so the president, vice president, treasurer, and executive secretary that really takes care of the more global IFSA side of things. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and encourage you guys to uh, register for official positions because um, this year with IFSS, it's, uh, it's not really too bad. I mean, anyone can join since it's online. Uh, but with Chile in 2022, being an IFSA official allows you to, uh, well, not only have an amazing experience with working within IFSA and expanding your network, but it also allows you, it gives you a spot in uh, IFSS 2022, which is, of course, uh, never a bad thing. But anyway, if, if you're ever uh, curious about any IFSA positions that might interest you, uh, you can go ahead and contact me or, um, yeah, there you go. I'd be happy to uh, give you some more information. Um, but otherwise, uh, right now, the, op the open call for a Northern American regional representative is open for next year's term. Um, so if that is something that interests you, of course, uh, you can contact me and I'll be happy to refer you. Um, but otherwise, that's uh, pretty much it for the structure. As I said, uh, current 2021 is one of the many regional meetings that is taking place this year. Uh, we have one in each region. And um, of course, on the wider scale, IFSS 2021, uh, which you might have understood, is open to the whole world of IFSA. So there you go. That's, uh, that's pretty much it for me. Um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, send them my way. Of, but of course, uh, one of my main role today is, um, or my main goal, is to really uh, encourage you to take, you know, positions within IFSA. Um, I mean, you'd really be surprised how taking a position widens your network and gives you opportunity that you might not have even thought of. So uh, there you go. It's a, it's a great adventure to be part of. <laughs> Thanks for the virtual clapping. I can almost hear it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than that, um, of course, uh, since CARM 2022 is also going to be taking place, um, we're going to have to elect an organizing committee for it. It's, uh, it's a bit of a tricky situation because we don't know whether it's going to be held online or not. But in, um, in any case, um, I think it's a great way to focus the committee's energy on the project. Um, IFSS 2020 and of course 2021 has been a great opportunity for that. It's, uh, you know, I think Vincent, Sandrine and Ariane can, uh, uh, can support me on that, but it's, it's really brought the committee together. So hosting, uh, hosting a CARM really does the same thing. Sometimes you don't really know what to do uh, within your committee, especially when it's online. Um, and, you know, the, the activities are, uh, are sometimes elusive. You don't really know where to put your energy in. So, uh, you know, putting yourself in a project like hosting Garm is, uh, can be a great way to bring the committee together. That's my little sales pitch for today. So there you go. Um, any questions, any comments on today's session?